Good morning, everybody. Please sit down. I'd like to welcome you all to St. Paul's this morning. So pleased to see so many of you. Um, and thank you for following the COVID uh, guidance around coming in through the main entrance, one-way system going out that way, and refreshments will be in the car park uh, outside the large hall after the service. I have quite a few notices this morning. Um, the first one, um, primarily we're, we are thinking about what to do uh, from the 19th of July when the government has announced that the COVID restrictions will be eased. Uh, as a church, the elders um, and the members will need to decide how we approach that. Um, and the elders have a small risk assessment group. Hello. The, the not ah, is that better? <laughs> okay. Um, the um, elders have a risk assessment group which will be looking at the arrangements to put into place after the 19th of July. We know that uh, many members of the congregation are anxious about what the regulations might say and what that will mean for people going forward. So taking all those views into account, we'll be meeting next week and the elders will let everybody know before July the 19th, before July the 19th, what the arrangements will be. So bear with us and talk and talk to your elders if you have any particular views. This week, um, we have a number of uh, activities. The Guild Coffee is at Franz on the 13th, between two and four in the afternoon. Everybody very welcome to come along, talk about the future of the Guild, uh, what you like, what uh, could, be, could be even better, uh, and talk about any anxieties about COVID as well, uh, as well as joyful things. Um, next um, Saturday is the tabletop sale for the Youth Council. Um, everybody is very welcome to come along and buy lots of bargains. Um, numbers will be restricted coming in, so it will be COVID secure. There will be no more than 30 people in the hall at any one time. But do come along. There will be refreshments in the car park, uh, and it would just be nice to all be together for that. Next Sunday uh, is a church meeting. Um, so that will be within the service um, and there will be a presentation about the child and youth friendly scheme from the URC. So do please come for that. Next Sunday is also the deadline for the Pauline copy date. Okay. Um, after um, the service, Martin will have to rush off to South Croydon United who are having their church meeting. So um, please let him go. <laughs> um, and uh, delighted to welcome Robert, who's playing the organ for us, uh, and our minister leading worship. Thank you, sir. Good morning, my friends. And welcome to our service this morning. As we are using worship material uh, that has been shared with us by the URC General Assembly, which has been meeting since Thursday, and concludes tomorrow. And so uh, their worship will be live from 11 o'clock. Um, so we're using those resources as part of our service this morning. However, we come to these times of worship, be it in person uh, or via YouTube, we worship together, albeit in different times and different places. Let us pause to be aware of God's presence with us. Responses involved. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. And we begin our worship this morning by listening to and reflecting to the kingdom of God is justice and joy.
So we bring him our prayers of praise and confession. And you will see that there are responses in your order that will also be on the screen. Let us pray. Creator God, you are holy beyond our wildest imagination. You called everything into being and saw that it was good. As we come to your presence, you gather us together with the whole of creation. Creator God, we worship you. Creator God, we worship you. Lord Jesus Christ, just as we are, you invite each one of us to your kingdom. You greet us each by name and welcome us into your family. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you. Holy Spirit, breath of life, you fill us with your love for all, so that we are enabled to witness with and to your word. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Loving God, as we draw near to you, we are painfully aware of our faults and failings. We confess that we have been greatly influenced by other voices than yours. We have been seduced by the superficial glamour of the culture of the world. We have not spoken out against injustice and inequality in our society. We have filled our own plates while the plates of others are empty. We have been indifferent to the damage our way of life has caused to your creation. Forgive us, Lord God. Help us to listen only to your voice, to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly in your way. Amen. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. To all who turn to him, he says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, follow me. And so as we follow, let us say together the prayer that sustained Jesus and his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to listen to and watch a relatively new song, which, as I say, is being shared by General Assembly this morning and is brought to us by uh, URC Youth. It's called Noah Built the Most Enormous Boat, uh, and I warn you, it's a bit of an earworm. So if you find yourself humming it during the week, it's all my fault. <laughs>
could get to know our God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him. The death of John the Baptist. King Herod heard of it for Jesus. Name has become known. Some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for some reason, these powers were at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John has been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man. and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. And when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the, Bapt the Baptist on a plate. The king was deeply grieved, and yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Thanks be to God.
Thanks very much for that. Um, and some really interesting and very graphic artwork there of the beheading of John the Baptist. So many Bible stories of these characters play with that age-old question, who is the villain and who is the hero? Uh, if you're into Marvel films or DC comics or all of these, you've got a whole plethora to choose from. This is another great piece of artwork based on this story. Beautiful stained glass, I think beautiful. The stained glass is beautiful, even if the image is quite hard. Um, what, what can you see? Who, who is the villain in this picture? Ooh, nothing. What can you see happen? Now with the sword. Here's the sword. So the soldier. And who's the hero? And what gives it away? Who might this be? John, absolutely. And what gives away that he's somehow heroic? <laughs> he's wearing a plate. He's wearing a plate. Yes. <laughs> he's got the halo. So the image is setting it up for us. In that song, that we heard just a moment ago. There are lots of other examples that we heard. We had Noah. Noah plays the hero. Who's the villain in that story? Ooh, it's a slightly tricky one. But humanity, yeah, people. Uh, and you might even say the storm. Uh, creation is the villain in this story. What about this? Who do we think this is? Moses, Moses absolutely, and, and Pharaoh, yeah, hero and villain. And here we are with David and Goliath, the hero and villain story. And Jesus, the story of Jesus, who are the villains in that story? Is it us? Is it the systems and faiths and politics and nations around him? Is it anything that separates us from the love of God? All of these characters throughout the Bible are a reminder that God keeps bringing us people to inspire us and to remind us that God faithfully works to remind us of love and hope and justice keeps pointing us in that direction and i think we can see lots of people that do that in our lives still the heroes that support and sustain us and care for us in our lives and i think we can see those villains those things that keep us from god's way we have a choice who to follow? The Herods or the Johns of this life? Now our next hymn is some new words to a familiar tune written by John Campbell and it explores just that thing and its title is Most Villains Prefer That Nobody Knows Their Self-Serving Schemes. So we're going to read those words, they'll be on the screen as well, as we reflect together.
this morning, we bless each other in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, may we make that vital connection between your word and our lives. Amen. So as we've seen, the orders and prayers that we're using this morning have been prepared for the worship of the General Assembly of the United Reformed Church, which is, is taking place this morning. And one of the moderators of our General Assembly, the Reverend Claire Downing, is due to preach. Now I don't know what Claire will say in her sermon, uh, but the hymns and readings I think are full of clues, so it will be interesting to compare as we watch back later via YouTube. One thing's for certain, I think, that all these stories about heroes and villains are more complex than we might think. As soon as we start to ask who are the heroes and who are the villains, there is a more nuanced picture at play. At first glance, it seems that King Herod didn't want to kill John so had him imprisoned. But he found himself trapped by his own oath to his daughter, named Herodias after her mother. Is he a villain? Or is his wife the villain? Or his daughter? Or actually, is it unhelpful to simply blame the characters when the overarching principle is that the messenger of God, who taught us that Jesus was coming, John the Baptist, was ultimately killed. Now the Bible is full of these wonderful stories and amazing characters. And you know, it may not be about them, but a larger story of good overcoming evil. Perhaps the message of these stories is that all too often we humans prefer the darkness rather than the light. The dark of so much of human life, the systems and powers that we live in, hide us, hide the light. We follow those rather than the light that God offers. And this, I think, is where the second element comes in this morning. This character, John, is a reminder that God is faithful and constantly seeking to show us God's way of light. But also, throughout Scripture, by a host of people, God is faithful to us. And my goodness, do we need to hear those words. And we get that message not by superheroes, not by perfect people, but fully human, complex characters. And it's the same with the villains of the stories. They are fully human and complex too. They are reminders of those things that draw us away from God's path. Look at Moses, not by any stretch perfect. A murderer. Noah used wine to excess. David slept with married women. Paul killed Christians. They're not superheroes, 
but they guide us to God's path nonetheless, when they trust that God is faithful in their lives. And it's also too easy to say that the villains are evil. Pharaoh was born into a system of slavery that he certainly perpetuated, but didn't create. Paul was doing what his faith taught him by killing those who challenged the faith that he grew up in. As soon as you start to look at these characters, it's more complex. And yet, there is a simplicity to it, because slavery and murder are clearly wrong. Take a look at some of these stories at home and ask yourself, who is the hero? What are we told that is heroic about their lives? Who are the villains? What is behind their actions? What makes them act in that way? Very often, the true villain are the structures and powers that lie beneath the story. Take a look. Now John Campbell's new hymn that we reflected to gets us thinking about which path we will choose. The path that God shows us of love and justice and mercy and community or the opposite hatred, injustice, cruelty, individualism, endless profit, destruction of the natural environment. He says this, so what will we be? Which way will we take? Will villainous ways keep us on the make? Or will we be heroes and work for what's right, who live to bring justice for all in life's fight? We are presented with a choice of direction in our lives. And I think that the hymns and reading that we have chosen for us this morning by General Assembly, they're there to remind us and the United Reformed Church that we all have a choice. Which way will we follow as a denomination and as a local church? Will we be faithful to God as God is faithful to us. Now a significant part of General Assembly this year is about the formation of a small group to look at the future of the denomination. We're approaching 50 years old. To look at its structures, its direction, its resources of money and people, of faith, of the number of our churches, to look at where God is calling us. And we here at St Paul's know something of that journey. We are on a similar path. We know what it's like to ask these questions. For about 30 years now, the URC has been aware of rapid decline in membership. We are not the same church we were, and we're not alone because all mainstream denominations are facing the same challenges. And we, this church here, have been on the same path. And the new group within the URC has been set up uh, and has started looking at some really quite challenging statistics and projecting where we'll be in 10 years' time by 2031. And uh, predominantly, the direction of travel on the chart has been a downward arrow in terms of membership, number of churches, number of elders, number of ministers. Uh, apparently, I'll be one of about 100 or so uh, by 2031. And there are two lines that aim upwards our finances, because there'll be a deal of selling off of buildings, and the number of churches that each, each minister 
will be required to look after. So there will be fewer of us with about eight churches each to look after. So clearly you can see there is a need to evaluate and to change. The group has to start from this point to understand where we are now. And we've had to do that in this church over the last few years. We've had to understand that we're not who we were. We no longer have 400 members. But accepting that, grieving that change, means we can accept where we are and start to see where God is leading us to now. Rather than looking back, we are looking forwards. And there are signs of God's faithfulness to us in that process. New people wanting to be part of our church family. A renewed vision. Less time fearing the unknown. More prayer. Now there's always more to do, but we are listening more to the way God is leading us. And there are heroes among us, showing us the way forward. None of us perfect, certainly not your minister, but as each of us chooses to follow God's way, we lead each other, we guide each other in the way that God is leading us. And I think we are taking a look, an honest look, at what is villainous, if you like, in our story. What holds us back? What makes us fearful? What stops us from following God's way? Through this process, not easy, exciting at times, we can learn to trust that God is faithful, that there will be change, there has to be, there has been. There certainly has been over the last year, and we've learned that we can do it, that we can embark on significant change for the good of all of us. And we've seen that God is faithful through all of that. What did we hear earlier? Oh, thank you that all through history you were faithful. Thank you that you are just the same when it comes to me. The URC is seeking to proactively trust that God is faithful. There is a courageous process being unfolded, and it's exciting to see where it's going to lead us. Scary, because there will be change and development, but I'm incredibly hopeful. If we trust in God and follow God's way, listen to the heroes among us, fight the villainous powers that crush God's people, then we will be on that path of light. God is faithful. Let us put our faith in God and the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can see that for our prayers of intercession, there is a response, and it's on your screen and in your orders. Within the darkness that light can bring, let your light shine. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come to you in prayer for our world and our lives, as we seek your wisdom to choose your way above all others, within the darkness that life can bring, let your light shine. God of all creation, you hold the earth in your hands. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. 
You fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide our light inside ourselves. Hear us today as we pray for a world too often darkened by hatred, evil, power and greed. Within the darkness that life can bring, let your light shine. God of power and might, your broken world cries out from the depths. A world often dominated by the darkness of war, of pain and suffering. We share the pain and anguish of those who have had to flee from their homes, countries and livelihoods, who risk their lives searching for a new start away from fear and war. May they see your light, feel your strength and power, and know the truth that they shall not be overcome by darkness. Within the darkness that life can bring, let your light shine. God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for people whose lives feel dark today. We have on our hearts our friends and loved ones and in the silence, we bring them to God's arms. We pray these people we have named in our minds will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. We pray today for tolerance in our society. We pray for all suffering hate and the crushing weight of poverty. Within the darkness that life can bring, let your light shine. God of life, we ask for your healing power as we pray for ourselves. We think of the physical and emotional pain we hide. We rest ourselves in the knowledge of your unlimited love. Within the darkness that life can bring, let your light shine. God of hope, make us instruments of your love and praise. May our words and actions and lives be living examples of your life-giving love. Within the darkness that life can bring, let your love shine. Amen. Now just before our final hymn together, just to say a, a huge thank you for continuing to bear with the restrictions. Uh, we know that they are about to change, but thank you for bearing with us and please pray for the elders during the week as we seek to make those, those decisions and choices uh, about the changing guidance. Please continue to follow the one-way system out that way 
and then round to the hall where there will be refreshments. And so, it's going to be really hard not to sing to this one. We have our final hymn, Great is Thy Faith. to the world to speak with courage, 
Go into the world to act with compassion. Go into the world to encourage your neighbours. Go into the world to share the good news. And may God, creator, redeemer and sustainer, inform and inspire our thinking, our speaking and our actions, and bless us today and everywhere.